السلام علیکم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر زاہدہ پروین ورکنگ ایز اسسٹنٹ پروفیسر آف اسپیشل ایجوکیشن ایٹ یونیورسٹی آف ایجوکیشن لور مال کیمپس لاہور آئی ہیو بین سرونگ ایٹ دس یونیورسٹی سنس ٹو تھاؤزینڈ فورٹین اینڈ پریویسلی آئی واز سرونگ ایٹ یونیورسٹی آف مینجمنٹ اینڈ ٹیکنالوجی فرام ٹو تھاؤزینڈ ایٹ ٹو ٹو تھاؤزینڈ فورٹین آئی ہیو پی ایچ ڈی ڈگری ان اسپیشل ایجوکیشن فرام یونیورسٹی آف دی پنجاب دس از دا کورس آف ٹیچنگ آف میتھمیٹکس ٹو مینٹلی چیلنجڈ چلڈرن دس از اے کورس آف ایم اے اسپیشل ایجوکیشن اینڈ دا ایریا آف اسپیشلائزیشن از مینٹلی چیلنجڈ دا کورس کوڈ از فور ون ایس پی ای کورس آف تھری کریڈٹ آرس دا ٹائٹل آف ٹو ڈیز لیسن از فلوسافی آف میتھمیٹکس ایجوکیشن ڈیورنگ ٹو ڈیز لیکچر وی ول ڈسکس ڈفرینٹ فلوسافیکل پیراڈائمس آف میتھمیٹکس اینڈ دا کانٹروورسیز آف فلوسافیکل پیراڈائمس ان میتھمیٹکس ایجوکیشن وی ول آلسو بریفلی ڈسکس that what are the philosophical foundations of mathematical learning and mathematical teaching so now we'll, we will start our lecture philosophical of mathematics education first of all we will discuss issues oriented approaches to philosophy of mathematics first issue oriented approach towards mathematics is ontology what ontology means is nature of being or existence we can say issues of being in simple words how a anything or any object came into existence کوئی چیز کس طرح سے موجود ہے اس کو ہم کہتے ہیں آنٹولوجی دا نیچر آف میتھمیٹیکل آبجیکٹس کامنلی انکاؤنٹرڈ میتھمیٹیکل آبجیکٹس انکلوڈ جب ہم بار بار ذکر کر رہے ہیں میتھمیٹیکل آبجیکٹس کا تو بیسیکلی واٹ میتھمیٹیکل آبجیکٹ از نمبرس میٹرسز سیٹس اکویژنس تھیرمس اینڈ آل ادر ٹائٹلس آف دا کانسیپٹس آف میتھس آر کالڈ ایز میتھمیٹیکل آبجیکٹس تو یہ جتنی بھی میتھمیٹیکل آبجیکٹس ہیں ان کی نیچر کیا ہے اور یہ کس طرح سے ایگزٹ کرتی ہیں اس کو ہم کہتے ہیں آنٹولوجی اس فلاسفی کو ہم کہتے ہیں آنٹولوجی سو دا ایگزٹینس آف میتھمیٹیکل آبجیکٹس جو ہے اس کو ہم سمرائز یہ کر سکتے ہیں آنٹولوجی کو دا ایگزٹینس آف میتھمیٹیکل آبجیکٹس جب ہم ان سب چیزوں کو ڈسکس کرتے ہیں تو ہم اسے آنٹولوجیکل اپروچ ٹوورڈس میتھس کہتے ہیں فردر آنٹولوجی فار میتھمیٹکس اس کو آپ سنگل ورڈ میں اگر بیان کرنا چاہیں تو اسے ہم بینگ کا ورڈ دیں گے ٹھیک ہے آنٹولوجی اسٹڈیز دا نیچر آف دا آبجیکٹس آف میتھمیٹکس نیچے ایگزامپلس دی ہوئی ہیں وٹ وی آر ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ یعنی ہم کوئی بھی میتھ کا جو ٹاپک ہے اس کے بارے میں کیا بات کر رہے ہیں اس کو ہم کہتے ہیں آنٹولوجی فار ایگزامپل وٹ از اے نمبر نمبر کیا ہے اس کی ڈیفینیشن کیا ہے اس کے یوزز کیا ہیں وہ کہاں کہاں پر اس کی اپلیکیشن ہے میتھس کے اندر تو اس ساری چیز کو جب ہم اسٹڈی کریں گے تو اس کو ہم کہیں گے نمبر کو ہم جب اسٹڈی کریں گے تو اس کو ہم آنٹولوجیکل اپروچ کہیں گے اینڈ اگر ایگزامپل از وٹ از اے پوائنٹ اور لائن ٹھیک ہے ایک پوائنٹ لائن اگر آپ پرائمری میتھس کو یاد کریں پری پرائمری ایگزیکٹلی تو اس میں بہت سے ایسے کانسیپٹس بیسک لیول کے کانسیپٹس ہیں جن کی آپ کی میتھ کی بک کا کوئی بھی یونٹ سٹارٹ ہوتا ہے تو اس سے بالکل سٹارٹ میں بہت سی ڈیفینیشنز دی گئی ہوتی ہیں ہر نیو کانسیپٹ کی جو اس کمنگ یونٹ کے اندر انکلوڈیڈ ہوتا ہے تو وہ ڈیفینیشن بیسیکلی کیا چیز ہوتی ہے وہ ڈیفائن 
कर रही होती है उस पर्टिकुलर कॉन्सेप्ट को कि वो क्या है क्या चीज़ है कैसे एग्जिस्ट कर रहा है तो इसको हम कहते हैं ऑन्टोलॉजी इसी तरह से एक और एग्जाम्पल यहाँ पर दी हुई है वट इज़ अ सेट क्या सेट क्या है और किस तरह से ये अफेक्ट करता है या सॉरी ये किस तरह से एग्जिस्ट करता है इन वट सेंस डू दीज ऑब्जेक्ट्स एग्जिस्ट ठीक है अब हमने सिर्फ ये नहीं कि हम उसको डिफाइन करेंगे कोई भी जो कॉन्सेप्ट है उसको सिर्फ डिफाइन करेंगे तो उसको हम कहेंगे ये उसकी ऑन्टोलॉजी है तो बेसिकली हम उसके सारे परस्पेक्टिव सब डायमेंशंस जिसमें वो एग्जिस्ट कर रहा है उन सब की स्टडी को ऑन्टोलॉजी कहते हैं फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर नंबर को हम एक को लें एक कॉन्सेप्ट है जी नंबर नंबर जो है वो ज़ीरो से लेकर नाइन तक एग्जिस्ट करते हैं अब ज़ीरो से नाइन तक जो है वो नंबर यहाँ पर इसका आ, ये ख़त्म नहीं हो जाता इसका कोई एंड नहीं है बल्कि जो यूटिलाइजेशन है नंबर की वो विद इन मैथमेटिक्स बहुत ब्रॉड है हर एक कॉन्सेप्ट के अंदर जो फर्दर कॉन्सेप्ट जितने भी मैथ के हैं उन सब के अंदर नंबर जो है वो एक बेसिक स्टोन है और वो हर जगह पर यूज़ हो रहा होता है और इसी तरह से जो नंबर्स हैं वो जब अलजबरा के अंदर उसको हम यूज़ करते हैं तो उसके मीनिंग्स थोड़े से डिफरेंट हो जाते हैं इसी नंबर को जब हम जोमेट्री के अंदर यूज़ करते हैं तो बेसिकली वो मयरमेंट की शक्ल अख्तियार कर लेते हैं ये नंबर्स और इस तरह से ये इट्स सो ऑन ये चलता रहता है प्रोसेस और ये हर एक कॉन्सेप्ट जो बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट है मैथ का वो इसी तरह से चलता है कि डिफरेंट uh, डायमेंशंस में जैसे जैसे मैथ्स जो है उसमें हम प्रोसीड करते हैं हायर मैथ की तरफ जाते हैं तो जो बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट होते हैं या जो भी uh, एक प्रीवियस कॉन्सेप्ट होता है वो कंटिन्यू uh, रहता है चलता रहता है द सेकेंड फिलासफी of uh, mathematics is epistemology now we will see what is epistemological issues and what epistemology means nature of knowledge its justification or we can say the rationality of belief it means ke jo knowledge hum mathematics ka uh, teach kar rahe hain uski nature kya hai कोई भी एक कॉन्सेप्ट जो मैथ्स का है उसकी नेचर क्या है उसकी जस्टिफिकेशन क्या है ठीक है कि वो उसके पीछे उसकी रैशनैलिटी क्या है उसके पीछे उसका बिलीफ क्या है आ, किस तरह से वो एग्जिस्टेंस में आया है द नेचर ऑफ मैथमेटिकल ट्रुथ जैसे अभी हमने पीछे ऑन्टोलॉजिकल बिलीफ्स में आ, उसका वर्ड बेसिक वर्ड जो उसका मेन वर्ड था वो हमने पढ़ा बींग ठीक है इसी तरह से जो ट्रुथ है ये ट्रुथ एपेस्टमोलॉजिकल अप्रोच का बेसिक वर्ड है इसके साथ आप इसको डायरेक्टली रिलेट कर सकते हैं इट मीन्स के मैथमेटिकल कोई भी जो कॉन्सेप्ट है उसका बेसिक ट्रुथ क्या है उसको हम कहते हैं अपेस्टमोलॉजी ऑफ मैथ नॉलेज एंड सर्टेनिटी ऑफ द स्टेटस ऑफ मैथमेटिकल स्टेटमेंट्स Knowledge and certainty of the status of mathematical statements. So mathematical uh, statements जितनी भी होती हैं वो uh, किस तरह से उनका knowledge क्या है और उनकी certainty क्या है यानी कितना एक यकीनी सूरत हाल है कितनी यकीनी uh, वो चीज़ है again वही चीज़ है कि किसी चीज़ में किसी concept में कितना truth है इसको हम epistemology कहते हैं अपेस्टमोलॉजी फॉर मैथमेटिक्स इसको आप नोइंग की टर्म भी इसको ब्रीफली uh, कह सकते हैं हम अपेस्टमोलॉजी स्टडीज द एक्जिशन ऑफ नॉलेज ऑफ द ट्रुथ ऑफ अ मैथमेटिकल स्टेटमेंट यानी इस चीज़ का नॉलेज गेन करना कि किसी भी कॉन्सेप्ट uh, की मैथमेटिकल स्टेटमेंट जो होती है उसका नॉलेज उसका ट्रुथ क्या है इसको गेन uh, करने को हम कहते हैं अपेस्टमोलॉजी Whether what we are saying is true, इसकी कुछ एग्जाम्पल क्वेश्चन नीचे दिए गए हैं Does knowledge come from experience and evidence? यानी कोई भी statement, mathematical statement या concept अगर develop किया गया है तो क्या वो किसी proper experience और 
एविडेंस बेस्ड है उसका कोई प्रूफ मौजूद है या नहीं है डज नॉलेज कम फ्रॉम आर्गूमेंट और एंड प्रूफ क्या उसके ऊपर बहस की गई है उस नॉलेज को उस कंस्ट्रक्ट करने से पहले और थर्ड वन क्वेश्चन जो इसको एड्रेस कर सकता है दैट इज इज नॉलेज रिलेटिव और एब्सोल्यूट तो क्या कोई नॉलेज जो है जो कॉन्सेप्ट नया डेवलप किया जा रहा है मैथ्स के अंदर वो उसकी नेचर रिलेटिव है या वो एब्सोल्यूट किस्म का कॉन्सेप्ट है नेक्स्ट हम uh, है मैथमेटिक्स एजुकेशन द फिलोसफी ऑफ सम एरिया और एक्टिविटी कैन बी अंडरस्टूड एज इट्स एम्स और रैशनैल वॉट फिलोसफी मीन्स इन सिंपल वर्ड्स वी कैन से दैट फिलोसफी ऑफ एनी एरिया और एक्टिविटी is basically its aims or its rationale what is behind that what is the rationale behind that activity that is called as philosophy of anything mathematics education understood in its simplest and most concrete sense concerns the activity or practice of teaching mathematics so the narrowest sense of philosophy of mathematics education concerns the aims or rationale behind the practice of teaching mathematics so when we discuss what is the rationale or what is what are the aims of teaching mathematics in our school curricula, curricula and especially to the students with special needs that is we term as philosophy of mathematics education In other words, we can say what is the purpose of teaching and learning mathematics is an important question. I have added learning to it because learning is inseparable from teaching. We cannot say teaching is a separate process, but it involves teaching and learning both. Although they can be conceived of separately, in practice, a teacher presupposes one or more learners. Only in pathological situations can one have teaching without learning. Although, of course, the converse does not hold. Informal learning is often self-directed and takes place without explicit teaching. Here we are discussing that how teaching and learning are interrelated, and learning cannot happen formal learning cannot happen without teaching and how teaching is related with the learning when a teacher plans to teach to a group of students he assumes that those students are learning so this process involves both teaching and learning because the focus of the teacher is always the learning of the students for example if i am uh, we follow the uh, current practice of online learning in our all universities uh, although we all are struggling teachers are also struggling um, for this online system and students are also facing many difficulties but what we are, uh, are assuming that we and what we are planning for is to make your learning possible while you are staying at your home now we will discuss applications of philosophy to mathematics education stephen brown he asks a very pertinent question by posing a trichotomy in the philosophical focus or the is the philosophical focus or dimension and what that trichotomy is philosophy applied to or of mathematics education philo second one is philosophy of mathematics applied to mathematics education or to education in general and philosophy of education applied to mathematics education so these three are different questions which are posed by stephen brown and it deals with the philosophy of mathematics education it philosophy of mathematics education should not only attend to the philosophy of mathematics 
It means when we talk about philosophy of mathematics education, it does not only uh, it does not only attend to the philosophy of mathematics, but it is a combination of philosophy of mathematics and philosophy of education, and definitely the application of philosophy. Stephen Brown suggests that it should also look to the philosophy of shrubs, other common places of teaching. As you all, uh, I hope so, you all know about shrubs because uh, in different theories uh, we have learned about shrub theories. The learner, the teacher and the value of society. What we are talking about, that shrub has talked about three different common places. So we also have the philosophy of learning like mathematics, the philosophy of teaching mathematics and the philosophy of the value or society with respect to mathematics and mathematics education as further and further elements to consider. So what we are talking about that there are three common places where we are going to discuss the philosophies. The philosophy of learning, the philosophy of teaching, and the philosophy of value or society. These three dimensions are. Looking at each of these four common places in turn, a number of questions can be posed. Now we will discuss one by one these three common places that how philosophy is placed on these three. First one is what is mathematics? Means we are going to talk about philosophy of mathematics. and it involves what is mathematics and how can its unique characteristics be accommodated in a philosophy can mathematics be accounted for both as a body of knowledge and as a social domain of inquiry what philosophies of mathematics have been developed what is the rationale for picking out certain elements of mathematics for schooling that means uh, mathematics is a very very broad area and subject and we have just chosen few topics for the school education and uh, we are talking about that what is the rationale for picking out few topics for the mathematics education at school level how can mathematics be conceptualized and transformed for educational purposes what values and goals are involved how do mathematicians work and create new mathematical knowledge how does history of mathematics relate to the philosophy of mathematics is mathematics changing as new methods and inform information and communication technologies emerge the next common place is how does mathematics relate to society How also does mathematics education relate to society? What are the aims of mathematics education? Whose aims are they? Means who have set that those aims? Uh, either they are educationists, either they are mathematic mathematicians. For whom? Like for what age level? What uh, needs? Special needs students or general students? What type of students? based on which values who gains and who loses how do the social cultural and historical contexts relate to mathematics the aims of teaching and the teaching and learning of mathematics how does mathematics contribute to the overall goals of society and education because this is an important element of mathematics education that it should relate to the society and education what is the role of the teaching and learning of mathematics in promoting or hindering social justice conceived in terms of gender race class ability and political citizenship like what is the role of mathematics education in all these societal reforms is anti racist mathematics education possible and what does it mean 
We can say according to our context, because we don't believe in racism much in Pakistan, but here we can say that on the basis of many differences, uh, whether mathematics education deals with all differences or not. How is mathematics viewed and perceived in society? That what are the common perceptions about maths in our society? Next is, what is learning? Mathematics, definitely. What assumptions underpoint views of learning mathematics? That why we learn mathematics? How can the social context of learning be accommodated? What are constructivist, social constructivist and other theories of learning mathematics? Do they have any impact on classroom practice, like impact of different theories on the classroom practice? What elements of learning mathematics are valuable? How can they be and should they be assessed? Means how mathematics education and learning of mathematics, how it can be assessed. What feedback loops do different forms of assessment create impacting on the process of teaching and learning of mathematics? Here we are talking about the feedback of learning and teaching. What is the role of the learner in the mathematics classroom? What are the roles of learner? What powers of the learner are or could be developed by learning mathematics? Because it should be a major aim of the mathematics class that what skills and what powers we are going to develop among our learners. Does learning mathematics impact on the whole person for good or for ill? Kis maksad ke liye hai? How is the future mathematician and the future citizen formed through learning mathematics? Means mathematics classroom can aim on what type of citizens we are going to produce for our future nation. What is mathematical ability and how can it be fostered? Mathematical ability basically mathematical skill there and the basic, uh, very basic aim of the mathematical classroom is to foster the mathematical ability among students. Zyada se zyada mein mathematics ability develop karne ki koshish karne chahiye. Is mathematics accessible to all? Again, it's a very critical question for the learning of mathematics that is it accessible for all? Because when we talk about different special needs or different needs of the students, it should be mathematics classroom should be accessible to all in terms of information, in terms of accessibility, physical accessibility and, all, and the social accessibility. Next is what is teaching mathematics. What means are adopted to achieve the aim of teaching uh, aims of mathematics education? How we are going to achieve our aims of mathematics education? And for the purpose of teaching, what methods, resources and techniques are, have been and might be used in the teaching of mathematics? Again, it is context bound. Again, it, it depends on the resources provided by the government. What theories underpoint the use of different information and communication technologies in teaching mathematics? We should know about the theories. How can the teaching and learning of mathematics be evaluated and assessed? What is the role of the teacher in a mathematics classroom? What range of roles is possible in the intermediary relation of the teacher between mathematics and the learner? That means what? role a teacher can play between mathematics and the learner to make the learning more accessible and easy. What mathematical knowledge does the teacher need? Definitely subject knowledge. If you are a mathematics teacher, you must have the subject knowledge. What impact do the teacher's beliefs, attitudes and personal philosophies of mathematics have on practice? Because generally, what the teachers, uh, the uh, beliefs and attitudes held by the teachers directly impacts on the students' learning. Teacher, jis tarah ki beliefs, maths ke education, subject ke baare mein rakhega, wo affect karta hai students' attitudes or beliefs ko. 
how should mathematics teachers be educated how they should be how teachers should be educated how teachers should be trained and developed for the purpose of educating school curriculum what is the difference between educating training and developing mathematics teachers what is or should be the role of research in mathematics teaching and the education of mathematics teachers now we are going to discuss few controversies in the philosophy of mathematics education you know well about the controversies when we have different point of views uh, a different point of view on the one hand and very different point of view on the other hand this is called as controversy and uh, now we are going to discuss different controversies in the philosophy of mathematics education first of all we will discuss about philosophy of mathematics the controversies which are involved in the philosophy of mathematics there are different philosophies of mathematics uh, we will not discuss in detail because uh, our uh, topic is philosophy of mathematics education not philosophy of mathematics because that is totally entirely and a different and in depth uh, topic and uh, purely of mathematics but here we will uh, briefly discuss the uh, foundationalists on the one hand we are talking about the foundation uh, foundational philosophy of mathematics that it involves want it is want to maintain that mathematics is certain cumulative and untouched by social interests or developments beyond the normal patterns of historical growth while humanists on the other hand and social constructivists have been arguing that mathematics is true and true historical and social and that there are cultural limitations to its claims of certainty universality and absoluteness so basically yahan par do philosophical thoughts ko compare kiya gaya hai ki yahan controversy kya arise hoti hai ki foundationalists jo philosophies hain maths ke bare mein wo is cheez ko focus karti hain कि मैथ जो है वो बेसिकली एक सर्टन क्यूमलेटिव और अनटच है बाय सोशल इंटरेस्ट यानी मैथ मैथ के अंदर सोशल इंटरेस्ट और डेवलपमेंट्स का कोई रोल नहीं है और ना ही हिस्टोरिकल ग्रोथ का कोई रोल है वाई ह्यूमनिस्ट और सोशल कंस्ट्रक्टिविज्म क्या इस चीज़ के ऊपर फोकस करता है कि वो इस चीज़ को ऑर्ग्यू करता है कि मैथमेटिक्स जो है वो बेसिकली हिस्टोरिकल और सोशल बैकग्राउंड और कल्चरल लिमिटेशन के साथ होता है और वो उसी तभी वो सर्टन उसकी सर्टनिटी और यूनिवर्सलिटी और स्लूटनेस जो है होती है सेकेंड कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इज एम्स ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स एजुकेशन दैट हाउ एम्स ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स एजुकेशन आर कॉन्ट्रोवर्शियल the aim of mathematics education can be a hotly contested area especially when new curricula are being developed or disseminated through or national through a national or regional education system and for this purpose ernest uh, has identified the aims of five different groups and these are basically five different controversies for the aims of mathematics education Uh, one of the aim of mathematics education is industrial trainer aims, and it focuses back to basics, numeracy and social training, and obedience, authoritarian. Like these are the aims which are based on the authoritarian side. Second group of aims are technological pragmatist aims. Useful mathematics to the appropriate level and knowledge and skill certification, and this technological pragmatist aims basically are based on industry centered. Third group of aims is old humanist aims. this is transmission of the body of mathematical knowledge and this is mathematics center because this these aims focus on the mathematics so we can say that these type of aims are centered in mathematics 
Fourth group of aims are progressive educator aims. Progressive educator aims are creativity, self-realization through mathematics and these are child-centered. When we set these group of aims, basically this type of mathematics education is child-centered. Fifth group of aims of mathematics education is public educator aims. And this is critical awareness and democratic citizenship via mathematics and it is based on the social justice centered. So these are five different groups of uh, aims and here is a controversy that what type of teaching, uh, what type of aims are used in mathematics education. One or other, which we take group in this aims, we have different groups in our culture and our society accordingly different aims liye jate hain but here is a debate and here is a controversy that what type of aims should be included in the mathematics situation third controversy is about theories of learning mathematics theories of learning we uh, you must have learned in previous subjects theories of learning here we will only discuss that controversy has erupted between different versions of constructivism most notably radical constructivism versus social constructivism. In dono ko aap khud se net se search karne ke radical constructivism kya hota hai or social constructivism kya hota hai and you will add by yourselves because I guess what I guess I have taught you people constructivism in detail in the course of teaching of science. The fourth controversy is Mathematics teaching. The teaching of mathematics is also an area in which there can be heated and controversial clashes of philosophy or ideologies. Among the hot areas and issues are the following. Five different areas mathematics teaching ke highlight kiye gaye for the purpose of discussing about controversies. First one is mathematical pedagogy. Problem solving and investigational approaches to mathematics versus traditional routine or expository approaches. What that means, what type of teaching methodologies should be used in the mathematics classroom? Problem solving or investigation style hona chahiye, ya traditional expository approach hamen use karni chahiye. Such oppositions go back at least to the controversies surrounding discovery methods in 1960s. Second. Controversy in mathematics teaching is technology in mathematics teaching because there is also a debate that whether the technology should be used in the mathematics teaching or it should be avoided. Should electronic calculators be permitted or do they interfere with the learning of number and the rules of um, computation? Second controversy is should computers be used as electronic skill tutors or as a basis of open learning? Can computers replace teachers? So here is a controversy that whether information technologies should be used in the school curriculum of mathematics or not. Third controversy in mathematics teaching is mathematics and symbolization. Some people think that there is no need to write down the questions of mathematics but it should focus on the formal symbol, uh, sorry, it should focus on emphasize on the put, uh, emphasis we put on oral, mental and intuitive mathematics including child methods. That means that we have written maths or mental math, oral maths, we should focus on the focus of the focus of the focus Fourth controversy in mathematics teaching is mathematics and culture. Should traditional mathematics with its formal tasks and problems be the basis of the curriculum or should it be presented in realistic, authentic context? So these are the four, these were the four different controversies in teaching of mathematics. Fifth controversy is in research methodology, methodologies in mathematics education. As you know well when we talk about any content course like mathematics, science, Islamia social studies, uh, there is a culture of research methodologies, research uh, in that area. And when we talk about mathematics education, 
तो यहाँ पर हमें कॉन्ट्रोवर्सी क्या है दैट ट्रेडिशनल रिसर्च मैथड्स यूज होने चाहिए या फिर कोई स्पेसिफिक मैथमेटिक्स एजुकेशन के रिसर्च मैथडोलॉजी यूज होने चाहिए रिसर्च का कोर्स आप ऑलरेडी पढ़ चुके हैं ट्रेडिशनली रिसर्च इन मैथमेटिक्स एजुकेशन यूटिलाइज the methodologies of psychological agrobiological and generally the style of the scientific research paradigm this typically makes use of certain philosophical assumptions about what there is what there is when we talk about philosophical assumption of what there is means kya cheez wahan maujood hai this is called as ontology when we do research to find out that what there is this is called as ontology and when we research how and what we can know about anything this is called as epistemology and the appropriate methods for gaining and testing knowledge this is called as methodology the scientific research paradigm normally frames hypothesis to test against empirical data gathered as objectively as possible often quantitative data we here we are talking about quantitative research thus it approaches appro thus thus its approach is to try to discover and test empirical laws and generalizations theek hai ek side to ye hui ki kya jo mathematics hai usme hame quantitative data ke through research karna chahiye in contrast the interpretive research paradigm has a contrasting set of philosophical assumptions ontological epistemological and methodological jo iski contrast hai and is modeled after the softer human sciences it seeks to explore real human and social situations and uncover the means understandings and interpretations of the actors involved typically it is more exploratory than confirmatory historically in mathematics education research and in the wider educational research community there has been conflict between supporters of these two main research outlooks and paradigms simply here we are talking about that when we do research in mathematics education whether we should use quantitative data or interpretive paradigm or we can say qualitative data right 